Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first coincidence miracle today is from someone who had some medical procedures scheduled with the doctor in the hospital, but they were waiting for calls back to confirm that the insurance company was going to cover all the costs. By the way, it's very advisable to do this because there's a lot of people who find out, get shocks after going to the hospital, you know, to get bills for thousands of dollars they didn't know about. So this person was doing the right checking and they got inspired to call the doctor's office two days before the procedure because they hadn't heard and they were concerned. So they got, they picked up the phone, they called the office, and as soon as the receptionist picked up the phone, they said, oh my God, I just now printed out your list and everything is covered, I was just gonna call you. So that was perfect timing, perfect confirmation. Uh, they were inspired to make the call by God. And we're talking here about coincidence miracles and we see them when God inspires us like this to do something and it turns out perfectly spot on. Our next coincidence miracle is an uplifting uh, love story. Uh, I met a man who had gone away to seminar, seminary to uh, uh, investigate becoming a priest, and he went through the process for a few years. And it's good that men go through that process to discern and make sure they want to be priests before they make a firm commitment. And after a few years, he decided that uh, he was inspired by God, a lot of prayer time, a lot of advisors, lots of help from some great people. But he decided that, uh, no, he was inspired by God, that God wanted him to be a family man and get married. Uh, and so he left the seminary, uh, pursued other pursuits, finished college, uh, and has a wonderful job at the moment. But the significant part of this story is that once he decided that he was going to become a family man and be married, he started trying to set up things, you know, so that he could meet the proper people, go to the right places, uh, you know, should should he sign up with these dating services, et cetera, et cetera. So he tried to get very organized. But one of the things that he was inspired by God to do, and he says was a great blessing, he was inspired that every day he would say a little prayer every day that God would bless his future wife. He didn't know who she was. Uh, I've heard other people have done this too, but in, in his story, it was really a tearjerker, a beautiful story by, by the ending you're about to hear about. So every day for like two years, um, he would pray every day for his wife to be, he didn't know 
who it's going to be. He was he was dating people, but he wasn't sure which one was going to be the wife. Um, and then it turns out that eventually he found the right woman. Uh, they got serious. They got engaged, and then they did get married. But in the process of getting engaged and getting married, uh, his wife said something very amazing and very touching. She said, you know, my life changed in the year X. I won't reveal the year because I don't want to reveal the people. But in a certain year and a certain month, she went to a retreat. And on that month, in that year, at that retreat, she changed her focus in life and became a much better person. And she uh, seriously began to consider and think about getting married and, and finding the right guy to marry. And this all happened on the month and the date that he exactly began to pray, not exactly to the day, but it was the month and the year, and, and maybe it was exactly to the day, but he didn't say that, so I don't want to put words in his mouth. But isn't that amazing? He was inspired by God to pray for his wife-to-be two years before he meets her. Uh, and she, in that month, in that year, when he starts to pray, decides to go on a spiritual retreat, and her life changes profoundly. And from that point on, she was out trying to find this perfect guy to get married. And they did get married, and they sound like they have a wonderful marriage. No surprise, right? I mean, they're both praying to God to find the right guy, right woman. Uh, and they're both asking God to bless their future spouses. I mean, it's remarkable. Uh, so it's no surprise they have a wonderful marriage at this point. Our next miracle story is something that happened to me. Uh, I was frequenting the park that I go to. I walk in a certain park. Uh, and I pray, walking and praying, good exercise, good fresh air, and praying is talking to God, so uh, you don't have to have formal prayers, you can just talk to God about what's going on in your life, and I enjoy these great outdoor walks, uh, sometimes a half an hour, uh, sometimes it'll be an hour, I have a lot of things to talk about sometimes, but it was a great, wonderful experience, and I got inspired, it was time to go, so I got to my car in the parking lot, I get into my car, I was getting ready to go, and while I'm getting ready to go, uh, another car pulled in right next to me, and I got inspired, give them a card about, you know, our, our weekly shows and about the two books. Not for me, but, you know, God has inspired me to write two books that helps a lot of people to become his friend, so it's for God. I give, you know, try to get people to read my books, they become great friends of God. And when I tell them about our weekly radio show, that's not for me, it's for people who gets something out of all these wonderful stories. So I was inspired, you know, Tony, this was a great coincidence. You're leaving, these two people came in, just hand them a card, what's the big deal? So I got out, uh, it wasn't a big deal. I went over and I said, excuse me, but I wrote two books. Uh, I have brief cards about it, a free website, and uh, I do a weekly radio show on Sunday Monday, Sunday morning. They said, well, what's it about? And I told them it's daily miracles and uh, it helps us to figure out how to talk to God, how to communicate with God. And it's a great help for college students. I could tell they were college students. And I said, it's a great help for college students because if you study for a test, when you're actually taking the test and you're having trouble answering, all you need to do is say, God, please help me because you saw me studying at 2 o'clock in the morning. You saw me studying all weekend long. And you know I studied, but I can't remember. So God, please inspire me. Remind me what I studied, because I just need to remember what I studied. It's not that I didn't study. And they were so blown away by that and said, wow, that is fantastic. So they took the card. They're going to look into the book. They're going to listen to our radio show. And I was so delighted because everything I told them is spot on. Uh, I did it when I was going to college. Uh, and it worked for me. I would study hard, and then when I took a test, I didn't worry. I'd ask God to remind me. And now that I'm getting older, I ask him to remind me <laughs> because I get forgetful sometimes, uh, and he still keeps reminding me. So God is my memory aid. Our next coincidence miracle story is from someone who went shopping. They got inside the uh, grocery store. Uh, it's a very large grocery store, and uh, they were far into it, and it was um, ridiculous to walk back because they forgot their shopping list in the car. So they said a prayer. They asked God to please grant them the wisdom to remember everything on the list. So they did all their shopping. They felt they were getting reminded. They got back to the car, and sure enough, they did. They remembered everything on the list, which they felt was very unusual to remember it all and get things right. Uh, and then they noticed that a car with a 
license number 555 had parked right in front of them. And they could see the plate as they were being awestruck when they got to their car that they were successful. They saw the three fives, which means the, the presence of God, the grace of God, and it's um, unmerited grace, you know. God is graceful to us, but we don't earn it. We didn't, we can't merit it because God is so perfect. And that's what 555 means. It means grace from God, but unmerited. If you earned it, then it wouldn't be the kind of grace we're talking about. Uh, you don't earn God's love. God just loves us in spite of ourselves sometimes. Our next coincidence miracle is something that happened to me, and I must tell you it's a, a bit embarrassing but I'm inspired. I'm supposed to share it with you and embarrass myself because it's a coincidence miracle. And what's important is that I share coincidence miracles with you, even if it's embarrassing to me. So what happened was uh, it was in spring. Uh, and by the way, uh, I have copious notes of miracles that I've heard about. People have shared with me my own miracles that I've had in my life. I have tons of miracles that I can talk about. So sometimes when I don't get enough input from people for the week, I pull off some things off of our pile. Uh, so sometimes this, this is a sharing from something that happened in the spring of the year 2023, in the early spring. Uh, so, you know, it, it's out of season, etc. But I just want you to know why that happens. I mean, someday I might tell you something that I did when I was 10 years old, and you wonder why I'm bringing it up at my age, but it's because it's in the pile, and when we don't have shearings from people, we go to the pile. So what happened this particular day, uh, and I'm happy to share with you, is I noticed uh, two flowers that are uh, early flowers that come out in the early spring. As a matter of fact, in 2023, these flowers were coming out when it was still very cold, and it was mystifying to me. And I was inspired that I thought, gee, you know, maybe in the stems of plants and the seeds of plants, we don't realize God's magnificence, and he may actually have wisdom. You know, uh, plants might actually be able to think, might able be able to make their minds up about things, and we don't see brains or, the, or things like skeletal formations where they have a brain or a head, but God may have wisdom in every molecule within the plant. I don't know, but I'm so impressed that these plants know when to come out, when to bloom, and when to do whatever they do. Uh, I know people tell us that God is doing everything, but I just see wisdom in plants and wisdom in trees and wisdom in blades of grass. So I thought I'd share that with you. I see wisdom in fish and cats and dogs. Uh, so maybe God created everything with wisdom is my point. But what happened was I saw these beautiful flowers and I said, you know, I'm not really into flowers. I don't know much about flowers at all. And I've never really looked into what are the names of these two. I didn't plant these plants. They were there when I moved in. And I have no idea what these plants are. So we're supposed to talk to God about everything. So I asked God, I said, God, what are these plants? And he told me it was daffodils and crocuses. And I, I knew about the words, but I didn't know what they looked like. And that night on the news, on 7 o'clock news, there was a special. There was a, a local farmer who is advertising people could come and pick as many daffodils as they want for seven cents per stem. The coincidences of this miracle were that I didn't know what the plants were, and I asked them, and I got inspired by God with the right names. I Googled it later and found out I did get the right names from him. And then at night, I'm watching the news, and lo and behold, on that particular day, they did a special on daffodils. So just I hope you see all the coincidences of God blessing us by working with us like this. God bless you all. I will talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.